You're watching Women of Strength TV for the purpose-driven woman who has a yearning deep in her soul to serve the world. Presented to you by Ange Wilcock, creator of Evolutionary Model of Well-Being, Mindfulness-Based Storytelling, and The Raw Woman Project, a businesswoman on a mission for every human on the earth to feel enough. Hi everyone and welcome again to an episode of Women of Strength and I've got another amazing guest. I just feel in awe of all these wonderful women that I get the opportunity to interview and today I've got Katie Kozlowski and I probably haven't said that right but hey (laughs) Um, and she's a spiritual alchemist for the heart and soul and is the creator of Loving to Be Me which I'm really looking forward to finding out about Um, and in Awakening. And she was hit by a taxi near her 30th birthday. Wow. And she experiences, she experienced a great awakening that led her to pursue a life of teaching the value of love and knowing the self. She uses various gifts of storytelling, meditation movement, intuitive guidance and spiritual teaching to create multifaceted programs that deliver life-changing content on multiple levels and believe we have everything we need inside of us. I love you already, Katie, because so do I. Um, But we just don't always know where to look and isn't that the truth? So welcome, Katie. Thank you. I'm excited. Yeah. So what, so obviously all my interviews are about being a woman of strength and, and I love to start around when did your journey of becoming a woman of strength start? I actually think, um, you know, when that, you know, I always, uh, for a long time, I didn't include the taxi in my story. I sort of left that piece out. I kind of omitted it. And um, then I started putting it back in because it's such a crucial, it's such a crucial piece of the puzzle. Yeah. And I really think that that was, um, like, that was it. And the thing that was so interesting was, you know, we, you're talking about strength and like what strength is and, and being a woman of strength. And um, there's a, th- this is cheesy, but there's a Whitney Houston song called, I didn't know my own strength. And someone sent this to me and it's all about how you, like the words are literally like, I crashed, I tumbled, I did this, I did that, but I didn't break. I didn't know my own strength. And, and I listened to the lyrics of that song and I thought, wow, that's literally when I started to understand what, what true strength is, and um, because it, you know, you would think that strength would be like muscle and stop the car. Yeah. And, yeah. But because of the way I reacted, um, because I sort of went soft and I sort of went with the, with the car, I was okay. So I would say that day was the very first time I experienced this other kind of strength that isn't that muscular, like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Which I also love. Yes. Yeah. And, and because we also look at things like vulnerability when we become vulnerable, people sort of see that as a weakness, but it's such a strength to be vulnerable and, and to actually give in to who we are is, is an amazing strength to have. So, and that's what I love um, about doing these interviews because all the stories that I hear are incredible women who just said, I've had enough. I'm going to give in to who I am. And I'm going to grow from that. And so you're, you talk about Loving To Be Me, which is your website and, and the work that you do. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah. So basically, you know, I've, I've been in this sort of community for a long time. I've been on this path for a long time. And um, I got to this moment where I, I found that, you know, spirituality and, and, and personal development and all of that can be so much about changing yourself like getting to the highest level, like reaching the top of the mountain, manifesting that mansion. Like yeah. it's, yeah. it's all of this like external stuff. And I um, went through an experience recently. Like I thought that being hit by a taxi was like, oh man, that was like the worst thing that's ever going to happen to me at the end, right? Well, then, then some more stuff happened and um, I ended up moving home. I left New York and, and I went through this um, sort of what I would call in the um, emptying process where you go from sort of being full of all of these things that you think you are to being completely empty. And I wasn't depressed, um, but I was, I was feeling a lot. And, and I woke up one day and I was like, wow, 
you know what it's really about? Like I've been teaching this stuff for a long time, but, but what it's really about is loving myself today. Yeah. Because if I can't love myself today in this rubble, like in this, this moment of complete and utter destruction, I mean, that, that's what it felt like. It really wasn't that bad. But you know what I mean? Like when you get to that point where you're just raw and you're like, I have nothing left. Like I have, I, I'm just so um, open that, you know, it feels terrible. But if you can't love yourself in that moment, then you're sort of really in a predicament because that's actually the purpose. So mm -hmm. I woke up one day and I said, oh, it's loving to be me. It's not like manifest the life of your dreams. It's not like um, find your soulmate. Like all that stuff's beautiful. Yeah. But I don't think that serves us in the long run because it takes us further and further away from who right. we are. Because yeah, we'll absolutely. manufacture forever what yeah. we want. And so that's what it's about. It's about um, teaching you and guiding you how to um, – literally embrace yourself where you are, as you are, who you are, no matter what, because we really can't, I mean, we can change, but we can't change. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's like we true. can do yeah. things, but like our bone structure is our bone structure. My face is my face. You know what I mean? And mm. I could spend my whole life wishing, oh, if only I had that person's life, or if only I had blah, 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 or the, a, the, a husband or this or that. And I just, I, it was a moment where I literally was like, I have nothing, which is another Whitney Houston song. <laughs> but um, I'm just teaching Whitney Houston songs. Um, but, it, you know, like, that's what it's about. It's about having the courage to go there yeah. to that sort of utter realness and, and love it and not yeah. hate it and not deny it, but literally be like, well, yeah, this, this is me. Yeah. And, I'm and it cool. is that whole, it, and you're right, it is about loving it because it's about that whole process of, of loving the good, bad, and the ugly because what we do is we, we love the good stuff about us, but we have to realize that we bring a lot with us when we come into this world and we have a huge experience and a huge journey along the way and there's lots of things that, that we don't like about ourselves and it's loving those parts, isn't it? Right. Loving the parts that we, that we don't like. The bit yeah, that we like right, people. or that we don't want to see or that we yeah. love to hide. Like, um, and it's interesting because I've always been um, a really positive person, like a very almost too much so yeah you know? and there is such a thing you can yes you can be right yeah, um and it was the queen of rose colored glasses and so yeah. i could paint the most positive picture out of anything you know i could turn it i could take i the way i would describe it now is like i could take like a, a turd right like it's a pile of poo yeah. and put a hat on it and be like look I made it so cute, right? Look how cute that is. And it's like, well, it's actually a bunch of like yucky stuff in a hat and yeah. you just dressed it up. Yeah. And I'm so good at that. Yeah. Um, but then I realized like, that's not, that only serves us so much mm. because we have to actually, if we continually dress up who we are, then we don't really know who we are. Like yeah. actually, honestly, who we are. We're just yeah. like, Absolutely. And I totally agree because what, what I've what I've found um, in terms of my own journey, but also in terms of what I understand, I study a lot around neuroscience, is that when we pretend around the whole being positive all of the time, we're actually not being true to ourselves. And on the cellular level, all that negativity that we're not acknowledging um, is creating disease and, and unrest in our body. And that manifested itself in me as an autoimmune disease because I was very much, you know, like you. I could see the good in everything. You know, I, I never I was always looking for the good, never accepting that there was any bad. And um, so completely out of balance. And right. when we think out of balance, our body becomes, our physical body becomes out of balance. So, so I love that. I, I love that... Um, you know, you realize that too, because when we don't, we think, you know, life is great. Let's always look for the diamonds. The body will tell you something quite different. So. Right. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, and it, that's exactly it. And it's like when you, what I found and sort of what I learned was, okay, like if you're constantly living your life with blinders on, even if they're headlights and they're shiny and they're bright and they're beautiful, 
there's all this stuff that you're not seeing. And it wasn't until I actually um, was able to actually call out the, I don't want to call it like the bad stuff, but you know what I mean? The real stuff, the real yeah. thing, yeah. like um, the reality, like the truth of what was going on. Mm. Um, and even things like, even like simple things like debt, right? Like how much money did I owe on my credit cards? You know, and I'd be like, oh, it's going to work out. It's okay. The universe has my back. Well, yeah. um, if you're in debt, you're in debt, you know, yeah. like the universe is not going to swoop in and wipe your debt out until you take responsibility and acknowledge that you have it, you know? So it was things like that. It was like, it was very, um, human experience. Like, and I think that that's, um, one of the things that I'm, that's why I call myself more of like an alchemist and, and a scientist and like a coach or a teacher, because I'm, I'm, I'm looking at the behaviors that are keeping us from actually embracing our true selves. And, you know, I was classic, like I was Pollyanna. And that was such a wonderful thing, except that I was not admitting all of these things that kept happening, you know, like um, hurtful, damaging, painful behaviors that I was responsible for. Yeah. But until I actually was able to admit that the scenarios and the situations had gotten that bad, I couldn't change it, you know? And it, so it's like, we can change, but we, but we change by virtue of um, actually seeing the truth. You know what I mean? That's alchemy, right? Like yeah. that's, that's alchemy, like lead to gold. But if you're pretending like the lead is already gold, you'll never get the gold. You've got to actually use the lead. Yeah. Yeah. You know? So what would you say to, to the women that are listening to this? What would be the first step in terms of actually stepping into your truth and, and being you? I, the more and more I think about this, um, because it can be very um, misleading. I think the spiritual community has sort of like, it, it's gotten very watered down and it can really, um, it, it can take you away from the true path because it's so shiny. Yes. Um, I think that, and, and, and I'm someone who's been there. So that's, you know, that's why I feel comfortable saying that. I love all that stuff, but if you're not dealing with reality also, it's going to, it's going to maybe be a disservice and not a service to yourself. So I think the first thing is that like, just sit down and, and get really comfortable and clear with your own self. Like something as simple as literally looking at yourself in the mirror. You know what I mean? Like I, um, even like I, I did this recently, um, and I have no secrets. I actually uh, looked at myself, like my physical self, like my naked physical self in the mirror, like my whole body and my, my back, like I took a picture of my back. And the reason why I did it was because I had put some weight on and I was so um, upset and like appalled because I'd worked so hard. I, I lost all this weight and then I went through this life changing experience, right? And then I was in a new environment and I wasn't working out as much and you know, life changed, I changed and I ended up with like an extra 20 pounds on. And I knew I wasn't happy, but I, I had to literally force myself, say like, listen, I had to, you, you have to get, get comfortable and talk to yourself nicely and say, listen, it's all gonna be okay but you have to have the courage and the faith to look at what it is. Mm -hmm. So if it's debt, total up how much money you owe, total it all up and look at it and say, wow, okay, I am $56,000 in debt, you know, and this is what I'm going to do to get out of it, but total it up. If it's your weight, um, figure out how much, how much weight you've put on or how much you'd like to take off. Look at your body. Like it's, I think because it's, the thing that's interesting is spirit is something you can't touch, right? So like yeah. I can sit and I can play in the ethers as much as I want, but the reality is I have a physical body and it's showing me what's happening. Yeah. And I have a physical bank account and it's showing me what's happening. So if I want to change myself in the positive direction, I have to have the courage to say, okay, my bank account is a reflection of me. Mm -hmm. What is actually happening here? My yeah, body yeah. is a reflection of me. What's happening here? My relationships, my careers, whatever it is. So that's my advice is to pick the things that you feel comfortable digging into and literally get up close and personal with it yeah. and just, just go for it. It's like, it's like ripping a bandaid off because as soon as I went to the trainer and I said, oh shoot, I have 20 pounds of body fat to lose. I was like, no problem. Okay, I'm going to do it. 
But that stepping on the scale and being comfortable and saying, well, okay, this is what I am now. It's okay. It's mm -hmm. not good or bad. It's where I am and I can change it. But I can't change it with my hands over my eyes, just wishing and hoping and praying. No. The spirit's going to swoop in and change my life for me because it doesn't work that way. Yeah, and, it, and it's so true because once we acknowledge this is where we're at, you know, whatever aspect of our life is, like you said, then the next step is taking action because a lot of people go into the whole spiritual law of attraction and go, well, this is what I want. This is what I'm visualizing. This is what I, I want to manifest for myself and I want to manifest um, the solutions and they never take action and then they go, but it doesn't work. And it's like, right. well... You have to take action too. Like you said, you know, you, you went to the gym, you saw your trainer and you said, right, this is what I want. This is the reality of where I am right now and, and I need to do something. And, um, and it's in the doing, isn't it, that it happens. So right. yeah, it's great. First yeah. step is acknowledging and second step is taking action. Right. It's really like not that um, different than anything, right? If you have mm. an addiction, like all of those things. And I think that that's, even what I learned with the taxi when I got hit by the taxi was like, it was such an obvious um, message that, that I had a real problem on my hands. And the problem was that I wasn't treating myself with any respect. Yeah. Like that was the message that came through. Um, and I that knew was a it. big lesson to learn, wasn't it? Wow. You no, know. It was, yeah. I mean, <laughs> Hey, I, and I, every time anyone I talk to you about something like, listen, I do not advise it. And a lot of no. this is, where I disagree with a lot of people because a lot of people say, well, hey, you know, sometimes it takes being hit by a car or whatever. And I would say, you know what? I don't agree no. because I, I had to get hit by a car, right? But I didn't die. I was very lucky. I should have, I didn't. I'm very blessed and I have a reason to be here. So if people will actually listen to what I'm saying, then they don't have to have that experience. Like it's this thing that like we think we just wait until like the massive wave of suffering comes over us to wake up Yeah. instead of like being proactive and saying, well, Hey, wait a minute, maybe there's a way to prevent the suffering. Like what if I just like started being responsible now, then I don't have to suffer. You know, it's like yeah. maybe if I watch my weight and I don't eat and I care for my body and I treat it with love, I don't have to get cancer or I don't have to have heart disease or I don't, you know, we have all these diseases. You're talking about those diseases, right? Like disease. Mm. We have all this stuff, all these things in the world that create suffering. But I believe that if we actually, that's why I call it loving to be me, right? If we actually start loving ourselves more and paying attention, then maybe we don't have to go through that. Yeah. The same day. Yeah. It doesn't hurt as much. Yeah, absolutely. And I think a lot of that, you know, loving to be me, and I, and I love the title of that, is that a lot of the suffering goes on in our childhood anyway that we have no control over. And it's only when we become the adult that we start, right. you know, continue to live that story. But if we can start doing this work, you know, like, like you're doing, loving to be me, we don't have to go through the adult suffering because that suffering can be quite horrendous. And so when right. we understand our story and we can move out of it and, and start creating who we really are, you know, that, that's amazing. Now, now, you're a woman in business, and um, I know that, you know, I'm a woman in business too, and I know that a lot of women that I've spoken to, um, there's some challenges, you know, around that, being a woman in business as well, because our own stories come up. What's been some of the challenges for you setting up, you know, loving to be me and on that right. business journey? Yeah, I was actually just talking to someone about this yesterday, and I said, like, I'm really good at making money, right? But when it comes to me making money in my business, mm. uh, this business, I sometimes put the brakes on and I'm like, what's the beef with that? Like, what is my beef? Yeah. And what I found, what she said to me that actually made so much sense is she said, it's very possible for you to um, almost over-personalize your business. And I take everything. I... I love so much. I love myself. I love other people. Like I'm a very personal person, you know, like I'm not impersonal, I'm personal. And so that gets in my way because I want, I, I, I take it so personally, right. That I'm afraid to actually sell my, not sell, but, or yeah, but sell. I don't see, I don't want to say that word, but it's yeah. true. You're selling your services, right? You're selling your wisdom. You're selling your training. And what she said to me that, that I found 
so helpful. She said, you know, you're not selling you. Like, it's not me. I'm not selling KDK. Yeah. I'm the, the vehicle that delivers the wisdom and the experiences and the, the, the guidance that can help people. But yeah. it's not mine. It's, it's, it's teachings, ancient teachings and wisdom and divine guidance. And, and that doesn't actually belong to me. Yeah. So it's not as personal as I'm making it. And when I treat it, I think, um, I think Elizabeth Gilbert said this, like, whatever you do, don't call it your baby. It's not your baby. Your business isn't your baby. I think yeah. she said, um, cause I kept saying like, Oh, it's my baby. I'm like, I'm so protective of my baby. And somebody said that to me. They said, don't think of it as your baby because you don't have to protect your business. Your business is strong. Your business is intelligent. Your business is based in in a solid foundation, you yep. know? So I think that's where I got the most hung up because here I was treating it like this, like, like I want to be treated, right? I want to be nurtured and loved and, um, you know, taken care of. And, and so I'm sort of guilty of over personalizing business. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's where it gets sort of tricky because I'm very ultra feminine, right? I love the feminine energy and that's about nurturing and, and all of that stuff. And the, and the man, masculine energy, right. Is, is more about the going and the doing and the being and talk by yeah. person, right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and this is the first time where I've a actually uh, just in talking to you, where I thought, wow, you know, there really is something to that because mm -hmm. if I'm going to treat it completely in the feminine, it's going to be really hard for it to actually like be strong and stand on its own two feet because I'm treating it like a baby. Yeah. When it's a full grown adult. Yep. And and that's it because I mean if we always treat something as a baby, it never grows up. So it's right. always it's always at that, you know that baby stage and and I mean you, you can look at businesses that they are that we do go through transitions from you know right. birth the birth of, of the business and, right. and transition into crawling and then walking and then but um, being very feminine and, and I connect to that too because that that whole being feminine being creative it's all about nurturing and caring and and then when it gets to that point of i have to be in action which is very masculine it's like oh right. what do i do right. what, what i what i've done with that is i i've just sourced that out it's just like these are the things that i love to do this is my genius this is what i'm great at and the things that i it's not that i don't like to do but are time consuming you feel hard it's um, I just outsource that and get someone else to do it for me and it works it really really moves your business forward because otherwise right. we get we get stuck in, in in the whole you know this is my baby I want to cherish it so in right. some sense you can cherish that beautiful part of the baby that you always want to keep close to your heart but right. the other stuff the teen what I call maybe it's the teen stuff it's go well you have the teen <laughs> I'll keep the baby <laughs> um, right but it's great to hear that because what I'm finding through doing these interviews and I'm absolutely loving it. I, I could just do this forever the rest of my career and I may do, but what I'm finding with that is the story is very much the same. We're all very feminine women in, in our energy and we've got a great message to get out to the world. We want to make a huge difference. Um, but knuckling down and doing the action stuff around that and selling it, as you say, Right. It feels hard. It's sort of there's a harshness to it. There's a hard edge to it. Right. Um, so yeah. So so I love it. it. It's very common, and I think doing these interviews is, is to let business women out there know that hey, you're not alone. We all we all do feel this, um, right. and we do get frustrated around. I've got this amazing gift to offer that's been given to me to share. And I get frustrated because I can't get it out there. So, um, mm -hmm. so what were the steps that you've taken to get your message out there? You know, you, you've got your website, um, which I've looked at and is, is beautiful and, and lovely. What else have, have you had to do to sort of push yourself mm -hmm. forward into this masculine energy? to get Right, right. Well, as you, um, you're also uh, working on um, publicity, right? Like yes. getting yourself out there. And I'm sort of doing more of that. Um, and... I will go through like that Hara website, right? Help a reporter out. And I'll yeah. look for things that I can respond to. And I've been doing it a lot lately, you know, and, and I, I will just pitch 
what I know to people. And sometimes I'm not sure if I'm the right fit or not. Sometimes I'm like, well, they asked for a, a psychotherapist and I don't really have that credit, but I have this information. And it's, it's um, very much like the way I was as a child, right? Like when I was a child, I was so full of confidence that like I would do anything, you know, I'd be like, I'm the best singer in third grade. Like I should have a solo. Let me put on a show for you. I did so many things. I didn't give a hoot what anyone thought. Yeah. I thought I was the best. I was like psyched and that's it. So I'm doing more of that. And a lot of times I'll go, well, I don't really know if I'm the right person for this. And I go, nope, you know what? Just write what you know yeah. and send it to them because they might not, um, you might not be right for this, but they might ask you for something else or just keep offering what you know. And what I'm finding is as I'm answering these questions, because I'm sort of, I'm, I'm kind of in the middle because I'm not a psychotherapist, right? Like I'm not a, um, I don't have a degree in psychology, although I thought about getting one. Um, I'm, I'm highly trained in spirituality and teachings and behavior and energy and all of that. Yeah. Um, but I studied the behaviors. So I'm someone that's interested in taking all of this spiritual stuff and sort of rooting it in reality because I think it's easy to sort of go off on, you know, go off like on another planet, which I'm capable of doing myself. Yeah. So I just keep, keep putting myself out there and saying, you know what? Um, you don't know what they're going to need. They might, they might find that this is the information they're looking for, you know, like, um, all of all things like that. Um, and, and I'm doing more like Facebook lives and things like that as well, just because, um, what I found at least for me personally is that, uh, I always wanted it. We were talking earlier about it not being polished, right. It being just sort of a candid yeah. conversation in reality. Right. Um, and when I first started my business, I was, I was, um, there are some coaches out there that you see and they just look perfect, right? They're like sitting yeah. on their perfect couch and their hair and their makeup is done yeah. and they barely move when they speak and they say things. And I saw that and I thought, okay, that's what I need to be like, right? Mm -hmm. Like that's how I need to be. Yeah. And I started doing it, right? I, and I would sit and I would pose and like I would do my makeup. And um, so I, 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 I took all that away. And now I'll show up and I'll do a Facebook Live. And I, I mean, believe it or not, this is actually relatively put together for me now. You know, I'll be in my gym clothes and I'll be talking. And I'm doing more of that because my feeling is that we're, we're coming up to a space where people need to know what real people look like. Absolutely. You know, yeah. we need to know what, 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 is, what does it look like? And the thing is, what I found is that spirituality, enlightenment, consciousness, healing, whatever it is, right? It, it, it's not in a shiny box. Mm -hmm. You don't get, when you get there, you don't look like, it's not like getting a present from Cartier. No. No, it no. is a brown paper bag full of like crap. Yeah. You finally found it. There you go. You know <laughs> yeah. what I mean? So I just am kind of remembering that in everything I do is like, look, you know what? I always wanted to be perfect. I always wanted to be polished. I always wanted to be elegant and articulate and like almost like almost borderline Stepford YB. Yeah. And I'm actually from where they wrote that movie actually, Stepford Wives. Oh, and okay. Yeah, so I grew up, I grew up like, like near that sort of thing. And I'm just learning that that's actually not what people want. Because when someone's going through something and they're feeling emotional or, or whatever it is, right? Like, I think there's more, there's more of a gap and a space now for reality. Mm. And, and so I remind myself of that too. And I say, look, you know what? You might not be as perfectly put together as you were. You know, I thought I was all ready to go when I was like, great, I'm a size four and my hair's blonde and my teeth are white. And, and now I look just like a guru is supposed to look, right? An American guru. <laughs> and then this, my life happened and I put on weight and I'm like, wait, my, I'm getting wrinkles and like my teeth, like I have a zit, like I don't look like a perfect guru anymore. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. I love it because I would say to you, 99.9% .9 of all the women that I've spoken to so far, I said exactly the same. And I, I nearly made that mistake. I nearly made that mistake. When I decided to do these interviews and podcasts and things like that, 
I, I had a look, I thought, right, how do I need to do this? I looked at the, the women that I admire and my first thought was, oh my goodness, I'm not like that. I, I can't do that. I, and then it was like, bullshit, sorry. Because actually about being a woman of strength is just saying it's not about polished, it's not about looking stunning, it's about like you're doing. It's about being me and this is me. Um, right. And, you know, I, I'm better now. I, I, I do look at the camera, but before I wasn't doing all of that and I was thinking, oh, the lighting's wrong, it's wrong. And then I had this list of questions and it was like, I'm not going to do this because I listen to and watch TV um, shows. And what I found by doing that was that you missed that being natural, being natural, mm -hmm. being who you are. And for me, it was very much about two amazing women having a conversation in a coffee shop. You know, this is what we do. We wouldn't, we wouldn't have this script and go, oh, what's our conversation going to be today then? You know, we'd go along if we were saying, oh, hi, we're going to meet for a catch-up. We'd, we'd sort of in our mind have an idea about what we'd love to chat about as girls. But at the end of the day, the, the conversation would, would just organically develop to what it needed to do. And, um, and I've loved it. I've, there's no nerves. It's just, this is me. Right. Every day I look different. Some days I've got makeup on, like it's right. morning here and I do my normal everyday thing. And so, but by the time I do an evening one, my makeup's gone. It's all worn off. My right. hair looks tired. Oh, I, look, I look tired, but that's who it is. That's who I am. And, and so I love that. I love that there are so many of us out there now doing this, saying actually, we don't need to be a guru. We're just us. And that's right. what women connect to, isn't it? You know, your, your clients um, connect to you, who you are, how you, you know, that's right. your, you know, we, we know in business it's all about branding. And, um, you know, for me, it's, this is my brand. I'm me. See, see me as I am. Right. Um, some days I'm gracious. Sometimes I'm not. <laughs> Um, but yeah, it's just me. So, so I love it. So now Katie, I just want to ask you one last thing about what would be one gem that you can leave us with, um, around, you know, growing into you, like loving, loving me. I, I know you've already said, you know, we have to look at ourselves and, right. and do that and then take action. But what's one gem that you could leave us today. Right, right. Well, my, my favorite thing in the way I, ex the simplest way to explain all of this um, is like, well, we'll use my mug. It's going to be backwards here, but um, th this is my cup. So you think of yourself like you're a cup, right? Like we are like, basically this, this is a person. This is, this is the body, right? You have this cup. And then what ends up happening over time is the cup gets turned upside down and everything falls out of it. Yeah. And my, and, and we all know that feeling, that emptying, that breaking, that pouring out, that crumbling, whatever it is, we've all been there, right? And that's when the strength comes in. Because what ends up happening is, I can't turn this upside down because it doesn't have a lock on it and there's coffee in there. So <laughs> turn it upside down and it runs out, right? And yeah. it's completely empty. And then you turn it right, right side up again and it's just sitting there. My my piece of advice is this, don't be afraid to sit with an empty cup. Yeah. Because what we do, what we tend to do is we go, oh my God, I'm empty. Oh my God. Oh my God. I have nothing. Oh my God. Oh my God. Fill her up. Yeah. Fill her up. And we fill ourselves up with so much crap. Yeah. That's not who we are. And then we do it again, right? And then we empty ourselves out and then we go, oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Fill her up. And then we're stuck in this pattern of like empty fill, empty fill, empty fill. And that is the roller coaster of life. That's like, yeah, happy, sad, happy, sad. You know what I mean? And that's why we're crashing into this suffering. So if, if you can start paying attention to when you're that empty glass, not reaching for whatever you can to fill yourself with and actually get it, becoming mindful of what you're doing. Yeah. Does this serve me? Does this feel good? Do I want this? in my life. Now that I'm clear, does this, is this loving or is it fear? That's, that's one of the massive pieces of what I teach loving to be me is like, is it loving to be me or is it hating to be me? If it's hating to be me, it's not going in me. Yeah. So that's my little gem is don't be afraid to slow down and sit in that gap 
yeah best yeah I love that. that. That's wonderful advice because it's so true when we do feel empty and like you said, we want to fill the cup up. We don't think about what we want to fill it up with. We just want to fill it up because we don't like the emptiness. And then when we fill it up with crap, we know we've got to empty again. So why not take the time and fill it up with love? So I love that. That's perfect. Thank you so much. Now, how can people, you know, how can our beautiful women out there listening to this how can they get in touch with you if they want to? Um, the best, love being there? yeah, the best way is if you go to the website, lovingtobeme.com, just, you know, you go straight there. Everything's right there. We're, we're rebuilding it right now. So it's going to be even easier to use than it is right now. Yeah. And, you know, when you land on that page, there's a big box that gives you a, um, a choice. If you want to access, I call it the well of love. That's like my, um, I give that gift to anyone that wants it to meditation and which teaches you how to fill yourself with this, create this well, right? That's what the cup is, um, which is the chalice, right? Which is the um, fountain of youth, which is all of these things. Um, it's actually quite profound, but I didn't mean for it to be. Um, and so you go there and that's, that's where you get the gift. And that's also where you can email me if you, if you want to get in touch with me. It's easy. It's katie at lovingtobeme.com. It's all, you know, very simple. Brilliant. Thank you so much, Katie. And ladies, please go across to www.lovingtobeme.com because it sounds like you're going to find some wonderful gifts there. And uh, once again, it's been amazing, Katie, to, to speak to you and for you to share some of your story around being a woman of strength. Thank you so much. Thank you. Remain real, authentic, and whole. Be yourself and continue to follow your dreams. Thank you so much for watching and we'll catch you next time on Woman of Strength TV.